everyone welcome back to the channel you are watching our cloud school where we are discussing various data integration problems and how do we resolve those with the help of azure data factory today the point of discussion is the use of parameters and variables with azure data factory like any other technology or the programming language we have the parameter and variables concept with Azure Data Factory as well. You might have seen the use case of these in my previous demonstration, but I have not given you a de detailed walkthrough of the same, which I'll be discussing in today's demonstration. So without wasting further time, let's discuss these two things in the demonstration. So I'll be opening the Azure Data Factory instance. So I'll be using this Azure Data Factory instance for the demonstration. In this instance, let's go to the Azure Data Factory resources. So to understand the parameter, you think parameter as in functions which we create in PowerShell or let's say functions which we create in any other programming language, let's say C -sharp .net. If I give you an example, here you can see that this is a PowerShell example which I've taken from the GitHub. This PowerShell, which has been created, it has got a certain number of parameters. What does it mean is whenever somebody requires to make a call to this particular PowerShell, they are expected to pass these parameters and parameter has some of the mandatory values and some of them are optional values and default values in the case of optional values is this particular value. Similarly, with Azure Data Factory, what you can do is for each of these resource type, when you create, you can make these resource type as in parameterized resource type. So think this resource instance of this resource type as in a function or a reusable instance of each type. And then these reusable resource type, you may add the parameters to the to these. So which means that if I want to create a pipeline, I can associate the parameters with a pipeline, I can associate one or many parameters with data set, data flow, power query, or any of these resources, I can attach or add a parameter. How do I do that? Let me show you. So let's say if I create a new pipeline, okay, let's create a new pipeline. Here we have got the canvas and the very first thing you will see here at the bottom is the parameter section, which means that you can attach or add a parameter to the pipeline and how do I do that let's click on add and this is the structure of the of any parameter right you have to specify the name of your parameter for an example the name could be file name just as a demo example then you have to choose a data type for your parameter so there are various different type of data type which you have for a selection and by default the data type is given as in a string because it's widely used data type which you may want to use it with parameters but the other options are like string float boolean array even you can get uh, choose object type or a secure string if you would like to and the last thing you have is the default value for the parameter remember the powershell configuration where you have the optional parameter and the optional value is this so similarly, if you want to make your parameter as an optional parameter, you may want to give some default value to the parameter, right? And that is what it is. Now, as this plus button is still visible, I can add one or many other parameters to my pipeline as well. So let me just clean this up. I can say that the folder name for an example, right? This is a custom parameter which I'm providing or attaching or creating with my pipeline instance, which I'm going to create, which is this pipeline. So my pipeline has got now two parameters. Both of them are of having the type as in folder name and pipeline as in a string, right? So let's look at the copy data activity, right? Wherein I'm going to select, let's say, a new file type. Let's call it as in folder name. Let's use the data set. I'm going to create a new data set, DS. I'm going to use the existing link service. I'm not going to talk about the existing link service as is. I'm going to choose the container name as well. But here, 
we are not going to use the file name because we want to parameterize or we want, want to make use of the parameter which we have with the pipeline not select the file so data set is going to be completed so our source is complete source data set is there we are not using any parameter but which file to copy for that i'm going to select the wildcard option and here i'm going to use the parameter using a dynamic content so this is where i'm going to show you how to use the parameter which is being added to any of the resource type the concept will remain same for data set or data flow or any other type or the actually the resource type within the, within the azure data factory resource so with an example we are looking at the pipeline parameter how do we use that so wherever you find the link add dynamic content by clicking on this link you should be able to use the parameters which has been created on that particular resource type so again i'll repeat this is the parameter i've created for the pipeline these two parameters if i click on this canvas outside of any of the activity you will find the list of parameters which are being created because i am right now at the canvas but if you go on the specific activity which is this one you would find that on any of the setting i can use the parameter and i as i'm interested to use the parameter in this particular property which is a wildcard path and the file name is the parameter i want to use so so i am going to click on this wildcard file name and here i'll add the dynamic content click on the dynamic content and you would see that there is a pipeline expression builder pan open and here you have the option to choose the parameter which has been linked with or associated with this particular pipeline here i can choose the parameter and as soon as i choose the parameter it says that as the parameter is linked with the pipeline so it says pipeline parameter and this is the parameter i want to use so i, I will click on ok and that will basically attach the parameter with this property and the parameter is of type pipeline so my source is ready so here i'm going to say use this data set and this parameter to grab the file from the parameter from the source location let's go to the sync i'm going to create another sync and i'll say that sync is a file format of same delimiter file type here i'll say that okay use the json as in sync right already available so i'm going to call it a sync one okay Again, I'm going to specify the container because container is again, you can make the container as parameterized container. I'm going to choose the CSV file. Let's call, use this particular CSV file. I'm just selecting it so that I can copy the name. I just cut it. So here I'm not selecting any file name. You can see that, but I want to copy the file name or the, I, I want to write my result inside the same container, but the file name may be something different so how you can make the file name as in different i will show you that so let's click on ok to create a sync now what we want to do here is we want to make the file name as in merge file and then we have to give the name of the file to our data set so i'm going to click on the data set here in the data set you can see that it might have imported the schema because we have created chosen the file at the beginning but at this case the data set itself is currently not completed the reason it is not completed because we have not specified the file so what does it mean that i need to specify the file name obviously i cannot specify the file name as is the static file name otherwise it will always create a file name with that is static name so what i want to do is i want to parameterize this source or the target type or sync type so i'm going to call it as in file name right as a parameter file name destination dist that is what i'm going to say and here in the file name section i'm in the data set right now if you look at i still uh, this is an example i'm showing where you can use the parameter at the data set level we were at the pipeline where we use the parameter but now we are at the dist data set level where we have want to use the parameter i click on this add dynamic content you will find the same parameter as soon as i click on it 
you can see that at the rate data set because we are under the data set right now not in the pipeline section data set dot file name destination that is what you have to specify what does it mean here we have created a data set which can copy a file or which can write a file read or write a file using this data set with this parameter the name of the file name will be defined by this particular parameter which is of type string so anyone any process any resource type who wants to use this data set they have to provide the information which is the file name destination as a parameter so if i go back to the pipeline you would see that as i am using this data set now you have got the option to specify that this is what the file name you want to use right now obviously i can create another parameter to the destination file name i can call it as an let's say dest file name okay so i want to give this file name as in destination file name and what i can do now i can specify the value of this data set parameter as in the value of the parameter from the pipeline so let's click on this use this destination file name the source file name we have used in the source destination file name we are using at the sink okay so our source is going to be read from the whatever the values in this particular file name write to whatever is the value in this particular file name right so our copy data activity is completed we have got pipeline with two parameters and a data set with one parameter which is at the target data set let's go to the sync data set what do we have it here at the sync data set here we do not have anything so let's validate the pipeline if it is working fine yes pipeline validation is completed now if i need to debug this or basically if i need to run this what does it mean is that as this pipeline is having these two parameters which means that whenever this pipeline requires to be run the information about this parameter needs to be provided because we do not have any default values associated with these two parameters so let me debug that as soon as i click on debug as you see that it is asking to provide the value of those two parameters which are linked with the pipeline so let's go to the csv file this is what the csv i'm going to use out.csv it's going to be a file name and here i can specify anything let's call it as rakesh dot csv file which is going to be a result name i want to create as soon as i click that it will use those two parameters and should trigger a pipeline with those two information if you click here you would find that the information which we have provided this is the output.csv file and it's going to use the file name which we are going to create okay so let's wait for the file copy action to be completed it is completed now if you go back to our result container which is the same container actually and see that we have managed to complete a copy of this csv file with the name which i have given in the output and this is the output csv and has successfully copied that so just to repeat we have look at the use of parameter right as an example given that we have created a, a attach a parameter with a pipeline two parameters and then we have parameterized a data source type as well and we have looked at how do we use the parameters to within the individual activities so activities i can use the parameters like this whichever you have provided the parameter you can treat this pipeline as a reusable component and this pipeline has two parameters so what does it means that anyone who wants to make a call to the parameter to this pipeline they have to provide the information like these two parameters what do i mean let's say if i create another pipeline and which is going to execute this pipeline so i'm going to drag this execute pipeline activity and from here i'm going to specify the pipeline number 2 which we have just now created and as you can see that as soon as i select the second pipeline which we have created just now and as the second pipeline has got two parameters those are the parameter which we have to provide as an information like we were providing the information at the debug time similarly so treat 
this pipeline as a reusable component or reusable instance of a pipeline type which requires two arguments to be provided or two parameters to be provided in order to use it. Similarly, we have created a data set which is a file format CSV but it has a parameter which it requires to be provided before it requires to use, right? So no matter whether you use it for sync purpose or for source purpose, you have to provide the value of these two parameters. Like we have seen in the pipeline too, we are using this parameter at the sync. It was asking the value to be provided, which is the name of the parameter which is associated. So you can attach the parameter with any of these activity type, right? Even for the data flow, I can create the parameters like this and, and make, you can make use of it. So that is about the parameters. Now in the next example, I'm going to talk about the variables with the data factory. That's it in this video. Thanks for watching it and do refer to the next video where I'll compare the description about the parameters versus the variables with the data factory. Thanks for watching it. See you next video.